Hi everyone, today I'll finally change these heavy steel wheels for standard aluminum discs which will be attached between each other. Nevertheless I decided to make double wheels, although in the final version the developers made them simply wide. I like the double ones more, by the way there are no such wide tires precisely for my arch. But still it's possible to put one wide tire on these discs. The discs will be welded to each other with semi-automatic welding machine in the atmosphere of shielding gas called argon. I took these discs as they'd been quite worn out over 20 years of usage, and there was no purpose to restore them, especially because they have a very successful form for my task. At first I'll completely clean the welding spot. The discs will be welded between each other along the rim and each disc center between each other. There will be no gaps between the discs and the tires will fit tightly to each other. Also for additional strength we can drill the disc centers and insert aluminum rod in each one. Then the entire thing should be welded or unriveted, but that's in case of complete reinsurance. For welding I'll use an improvised stand made of a swivel member with a suitable pitch circle diameter. I immediately checked the first disc for hopping. It was about a couple of millimeters. The second disc will be pressed with a pin through the central hole. Now using a tripod and a hammer, I'll align two discs between each other, as far as the years of their operation will allow. There's no point of using a pointer type indicator in such case. It's just impossible to align these discs in ideal. After leveling there was a small hopping of a few 0.1 millimeters, but it's not perceptible during the moving. I took an argon container for aluminum welding at my workshop and also a welding mixture with a carbon dioxide. Guess now electrodes will be used very rarely. I'll weld in a way just like the wide wheels. First I'll put tacks along the perimeter and then make a full penetrated weld. I didn't like the first seam at all. My skills in aluminum welding are quite poor, but such weld is definitely improper. I decided to heat the disc since aluminum quickly takes heat, and that's why the weld can become irregular. I'll make it with a gas burner. Thus the welding spot got heated till 130 degrees centigrade. I tried to make the weld again. It turned out better, but still not perfect. I don't have much experience in argon welding. I decided to look at the weld texture. For this purpose I cleaned it with a flap wheel. It turned out well, osteoles and craters were not visible. I also shaved the first unsuccessful weld as I found a small air bubble in it. It's a good sign. We're able to continue our work now and simultaneously experiment with the burner jet modes and direction. After some time I finally got a normal quality weld. I decided to make it in two stages. First I'm going to weld with a beading weld and shave, and then put a finish spreading weld. I haven't welded the disc centers yet, we'll do it later. Now we can remove the disc, but to unscrew the nuts we need to either cut the central part of the second disc or to drill a hole for the wheel wrench. I didn't want to loosen the disc, so I chose the second option. For this purpose I took drill first, but it couldn't cope with a step drill according to such thickness of the metal. Then I tried a screwdriver. It instantly overheated after such loads. I had to continue my work so I bought such perforator with a drill function and a step drill with maximum diameter of 32 millimeters. Till now I drilled two holes. After that I removed the disc and drilled the remaining holes in convenient position. The disc width is 46 centimeters. This is about 18 inches as well as the diameter of the discs themselves. The disc got cool and it was time to put those tires on it. As winter is coming soon I'll put the snow tires. The entire tire assembly process for such wheels takes place manually as such disc will unlikely get into the machine especially with the tire on it, but we can probably balance it. Then I put on a second tire and tried to pump this whole thing. As I supposed it wasn't so easy to do. The wide tires interfered with each other and I couldn't find the narrow ones on sale. I'll put the inlet tubes, it'll be safer with them. I took her 16 inlet tubes. It turned out that it's quite normal practice to put a tube of a smaller diameter. Everything finally gets in its place and we can ride it. 
After installation I tried to pump the inlet tube and the nipple simply fell off as it was closer to the center. I had to disassemble everything again and redrill the hole. I removed all the filings and inserted the inlet tube. This time it worked and the nipple remained in its place. Thus the wheel became ready. There's only left to screw it in its place and hope it won't touch the arch. Everything was placed successfully in its place. The short nipple of the inner wheel doesn't touch the caliper. I was also worried about the back shock absorber strut mount, but there was about 12 mm before it. If we'd like to lower the car the distance will increase. The wheels go beyond the arch also as needed. The second wheel was welded and assembled the same way. And now actually for what it was all about, this is a view from behind. It turned out so brutally and most important thing very similar to the original model from the game presentation. Now I really can't wait to ride it. I think you'd also like to see it outside the workshop. Thereupon I end up this series. Don't forget to support this release with likes, reposts, and a small comment. Also subscribe to the channel if not already in order not to miss new videos.